Hi, everyone. Thank you for staying for the last presentation of the day. Um, I will be brief as the introduction here is to uh, foreground this talk as an interinstitutional inter collaboration between Emory University, where Des Miller, our PI, is a graduate student, and Temple University, where I've been leading a project along with Megan Kane and Sarah Gray Stefan on uh, digitizing and curating science fiction. So, brief presentation overview. We will talk about what climate fiction is, uh, how we built the corpus, uh, overview relevant corpora we have ingested into Happy Trust and other corpora available there, uh, describe our research hypothesis methodology, and then dig into topic modeling and vector space modeling. Um, so we approach climate fiction primarily as a post-45, as, as a subgenre of post-45 mass market science fiction uh, that originated out of the New Wave era, uh, which was roughly from 1962 to 1980. The stakes of climate fiction today should be obvious, uh, but how do the stories we tell ourselves about our changing climate affect how we respond to it, and how historically did science fiction imagine the rise of pollution and the causes of environmental change? I should also say we've been trying to bear in mind the ecological impact of NLP. We're intentionally working with small custom corpora, avoiding large-scale cloud computing, and deploying pre-trained models wherever possible. So the background of this project was in 2017, we began building a climate fiction corpus that was built out of deaccessioned um, materials from special collections at Temple, the Pascal Science Fiction Collection, which is funded by Temple U University's Arts and Humanities Presidential Grant, called The Stories We Tell Ourselves, The Cultural Analytics of Climate Fiction, which focused on curating a subset of specifically climate-related fiction. Uh, the Temple SF Corpus has been ingested into Happy Trust and is available as a collection. I would also encourage you to visit our project website at sfnexus.io. Uh, the related extracted features and code are available on Hugging Face and GitHub. So the corpora that we will be uh, using today is all available in Happy Trust. Um, Happy Trust makes copyrighted text available for non-consumptive research through their data capsule, a secure virtual computing environment. Uh, big thanks to Ryan Dubasnik and Nicholas Perulian. Ryan's in the audience right now uh, and gave a presentation earlier today that was relevant to ours. Um, three corpora we are using is the, the Temple U SF corpus, as well as a corpus that was curated by David Nimno and Laurie Thompson um, with a larger set of science fiction and happy trust. And finally, uh, even lar or similar corpus of a broader set of literature in, in the happy trust curated by Underwood. And, and Whitty. And I should just say it's been a real pleasure. Uh, when I built this project, the idea was that graduate students would use it to learn and to develop and to, to develop new code and to find new ways of interpreting complex models. And that you'll see Megan and, and uh, Des have done some amazing work. Um, so our main focus on this project was examining waterways as a climate concern. And so we hypothesized that the climate corpus uh, that was developed at Temple depicts water and rivers as more toxic and polluted than a more general SF corpus or the novel TM corpus due to um, its curation around issues of, of climate. And so to examine this hypothesis computationally, we first used topic modeling uh, using both Jensen LDA and BERT topic. Um, we uh, sort of generated topic models for the Temple SF corpus uh, to identify topic topics with water and water relevant terms. And then we also used vector space modeling using gems and words of that um, for both the temple corpora, um, the other corpora, the, the general sci-fi corpora, the novel TM corpora, as well as the a smaller water uh, themed subgenre that we had identified within the temple corpora through the topic modeling. So I'll go through that. Um, so our uh, sort of underlying assumption uh, for using the topic modeling and then vector space modeling pipeline is that topic modeling traces themes across a corpus, uh, whereas word embedding shows how words are interconnected within a corpus. So by first identifying water as a theme in our corpus, and then uh, sort of from there identifying the similarities in terms related to water and pollution, we were able to um, investigate this hypothesis of how similar water and pollution and toxicity were within these different corpora. Um, so just very generally, um, the publication distribution of the Temple SF Corpus um, is from basically the late 1940s to the 1980s. So that specific new wave sort of um, 
subset of science fiction, whereas, as you can see, the Mimno Thompson corpus spans a wider range, but is also um, very much um, sort of distributed. Um, there are many texts within that same 1940s to 1980s range, um, but it's also important to note there's a lot of contemporary fiction in that corpus as well. Um, so we were keeping that in mind as we were sort of examining the results. Um, so we used two different types of topic modeling in this project, Jensen LDA and BERT Topic. And um, as you can see here, they are different in the way that they approach topic modeling. And so we propose to use them in a complementary manner um, to sort of see what topics each of them generated as related to water and water-related terms and which texts they identified as having high frequencies of these water-related topics. And so first, here are some results from the LDA topic modeling. These are a couple of the uh, topic models generated, uh, both for the Minno Thompson SF corpus and then the Temple SF corpus. Um, and so we um, were searching for topic models with the Heinz coherence, and so those were two of them. And for now, I'll give some specific um, takeaways from the Temple SF corpus, but we're obviously still exploring the other corpora and the topics that were prevalent in them as well. So in the Temple SF corpus, there was one uh, topic which had a really high uh, prevalence of water and water-related terms. So I have uh, these different terms highlighted, um, and they're different associations with water. Uh, pink are bodies of water, sea, lakes, ocean shores. Um, green are movements, um, or sort of actions that water takes. Um, and the orange are sort of reactions to water. Um, and so through this, we were able to identify about 17 texts. Um, where water, this topic of water, was um, very much present, um, most frequently present. And so from this, we began to sort of build a water subset corpus, which we, will then, we would then use to um, conduct some word to vec modeling on to get further results. And then burnt topic, there were four topics um, where water terms featured most prevalently. And this gave us an even uh, a complementary and an even more diverse understanding of how water is being talked about in these different texts. Uh, two of the topics uh, had water featured in, uh, alongside uh, words of experimentation, analysis, as you can see, uh, topic 54 and topic 11 are in that sense. And um, one of them was related to water and natural landscapes, um, sort of depicting it as a feature of an environment. And then one topic, 61, was very much um, concerned with issues of pollution, smog, ozone, air quality, those sorts of things. Uh, so it was very valuable to do both for topic and LDA to sort of elucidate um, how water was talked about at different levels. And then, as you can see, um, there were several um, texts that were um, most frequently using these different topics, and so we added them to this smaller water subset corpus that um, we then used, um, as Des will talk about, for conducting word to vector analysis to further um, understand uh, the similarities between water terms and terms associated with toxicity and pollution. Um, yes, yeah, so now I'll talk about the word embeddings. So these were the um, three main corpora and the most um, similar words to four seed words that we gave it, which were water, river, toxic, and pollution. Um, and just briefly, I think you can see some patterns in the different corpora. So um, compared to the novel TM gender balanced corpus, the both sci-fi corpora, corpora talk about like radioactivity, um, nuclear fallout, but we also noted that in the temple corpus, there was a little bit more of a focus on things like warfare, um, things that might be more related to human activity, which we want to investigate further. Um, so then we generated these uh, matrices of cosine um, similarities between a lot of words we were interested in. Uh, this is the one for the water subset. And these red circles are um, around values that were the highest compared to the other corpora. So we were really struck that water seemed to be more water and all of the related water words seem to be more associated with um, toxicity and pollution and, and related words in this corpus than, than the other three. Um, so these are kind of some averages of some cosine similarities that we, um, that we that we made for each corpus. So, um, you know, all together, this bottom number is a sort of like score or heuristic value for each um, corpus and how we saw it um, 
semantically relating water and those related words and toxicity and, and related words. So overall general takeaways are, um, you know, that, that subset, water subset, was um, dramatically talking, seemed to be talking about pollution and toxicity a lot more. So we want to repeat that process of doing topic modeling to identify more water-focused novels and then doing word embeddings on those for the other two corpora as well. We were also really struck by um, how high the similarity, coastline similarity values were for the novel TM gender balanced corpus. So we want to kind of investigate like where that's coming from, what novels it might be coming from. Um, and we have a lot of other plans for this project, including writing a paper and, um, and, and stuff like that. So I'll leave it there because I think we're probably over time. Thanks.